Hi, in this my 11th video on prepping for actuarial exam 2, we're going to look at problem 1.4.10 in Broberman in the 6th edition. It's a starred problem, it's not an old exam question, but it's worth looking at anyway. Uh, it is actually uh, related to my last video, in video number 10 we looked at problem 1.4.9. That was a pretty theoretical question. And at the very end of that video, we looked at what happens with continuous compounding, and the second part of the question in this one is going to be related to that, though this is going to be an easier problem. I'm not really quite sure why it's a starred problem. How often should compounding occur to make one bank's return better than, is, than another's is what this is about. All right, here's the problem. Bank A has the, whoa, completely unrealistic effective annual rate of 18%. I'm making this video in the year 2017. Savings accounts have microscopic interest rates, so that's way unrealistic, but we will go with it anyway. That's an effective annual rate or yield. Your money is going to grow by 18% each year. Bank B, on the other hand, has a nominal annual interest rate of 17%. It's in name only. It's going to be compounding, compounded a certain number of times per year and we want it to be at least as attractive as bank A, the actual effective annual growth will be bigger than 17% because we're going to compound it more than once per year. Yes, what is the smallest whole number of times per year that bank B must compound to be at least as attractive as bank A? And we're going to also repeat the exercise in a little bit more interesting case, actually, when the nominal rate is 16%. We'll see why that's a little bit more interesting, and that will be what relates to the previous video, which you may want to watch before this one, though it is a harder video. All right, so we've got bank A. Uh, the fact that the effective annual rate is 18% means we could say the annual growth factor, 1 plus i, is in fact 1.18. So this would mean one unit of money, for example, would grow to 1.18 units of money after one year. It's compounded just once per year. That would be the same as 1 plus i when i is 0.18. How about for bank B? What's the annual growth factor? Well, you can't write it as 1 plus i, where i is 0.17 here, because you're compounding a certain, num compounding a certain number of times per year, per year. You can write it like this, though, where n is the number of compounding periods. So the i here, if you will, 0.17 is a nominal interest rate in name only, um, because you're compounding, compounding n times per year, 0.17 divided by n would be the uh, interest per period, interest rate per period, uh, you know, if n is 12, the period would be one month, for example. What we're wondering is, what is the smallest whole number value of n to make this greater than or equal to 1.18? Now, you might imagine setting this equal to 1.18 and solving for n, but there's a problem with that. That can't be solved using elementary functions. It can be solved, I found out, using non-elementary functions, something called the product log function, but you do not need to know that. So pretty much the only technique you have here to solve this is just experimentation with your calculator and hoping that the answer for n is not too big so you don't have to experiment too much. All right, so here I've got my calculator. I'm going to plug in different values of n and see when I finally get bigger than or equal to 1.18. Let's go ahead and be systematic. Certainly n equals 1 will not work, but let's try n equals 2. If I go 0.17 divided by 2 and then add 1 and square that. That is not bigger than 1.18, so n equals 2 is not the answer. So now we try n equals 3, 0.17 divided by 3, add 1, raised to the third power. Still not bigger than 1.18, so n equals 3 is not the answer, but we are very close. So probably n equals 4 is going to be the answer. 0.17 divided by 4 plus 1 raised to the fourth power is indeed bigger than 1.18. n equals 4 is the answer to the first one. But, so that's the first case here. What about the second case where the interest rate is 
0.16. This is a little bit more interesting, and we'll see why here. You could try n equals 2, 3, 4 again, and it's still not going to be big enough. You might start to get frustrated and, and try, well, what about n equals uh, 100? 0.16 divide by 100, add 1, raise to the 100 power. It's still not bigger than 1.18, so then you try n equals 1,000, n equals 10,000, maybe even n equals a million. Let's see if the, let's see if the calculator can even handle n equals a million. 0.16 divide by a million, raised to the million power, uh, is, hmm, did I type something wrong? Let's try it again. 0.16 divide by a million. That works. Raised, oh, no, I need to add one to it. I, that's what I forgot. Add one to it. Raised to the million power. And at least if we're trusting the calculator, it's still not good enough, okay? This makes you suspect, hopefully, that no value of n will work. And indeed, now we relate this to the last video. As n goes to infinity, this thing is going to approach e to the 0.16. In the last video, this quantity was called j. And we saw at the end of the last video, that is, the number of compounding periods goes to infinity. The uh, effective annual growth factor will approach e to the j. That's e to the 0.16 in this case. What is e to the 0.16? Type in 0.16 to raise it to the e power. Go second and then press this button. There we go, e to the 0.16 is not bigger than 1.18, it's about 1.1735. You're never gonna get bigger than that no matter how many times you compound a year, so you're never gonna get, gonna get above 1.18. So the answer is there is no smallest total number of times per year at a 16% nominal rate for bank B's return to be bigger than 18%. Just as happened with the last video, I realized after I went ahead and shut off my uh, recording, I wanted to say more, I realized. And so uh, that's what I want to do here in this video, too, is I want to say a little bit more. We saw in the second part that with the 16% nominal rate, there's no number of compounding periods per year which you could do to make that as good as an effective annual rate of 18%. But we were able to do it with 17%. So that brings up a question. You might wonder, what is the um, smallest nominal annual rate for which we could get growth as good as 18% effective rate per year? Um, it's got to be between 16 and 17%. So I'm wondering, as an extra thing to do here, what value of J will make this equal 1.18 or greater for some sufficiently large value of n. As I said before, this approaches e to the j as n goes to infinity, and I probably should have said as n goes to infinity back up here as well. Um, and so to figure out what j will, what minimal j will allow us to get bigger than or equal to 1.18, effectively we can solve the equation e to the j equals 1.18 which means j is natural log of 1.18, so any interest rate just barely bigger than that will have a certain number of compounding periods for which it can be, give you a better effective annual return than 18%. What is natural log of 1.18? Type 1.18, then hit the natural log button. 0.1655, about 16.55%. Technically, since it's 16.551 here, that wouldn't quite work. But certainly 16.56% or higher, for example, would be an interest rate, a nominal interest rate, for which there would be a sufficiently high number of compounding periods per year to get your effective annual return bigger than 18%.